Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Another edition of the PD Preps podcast. Gus Morris, Keenan O'Doherty. Uh, it is September 19th, 2023, about noon. And uh, we're back. Uh, another episode. Um, uh, we'll get, again, you know, the drill at this point, uh, you know, uh, recapping last week's action, looking ahead to this week. Um, got some interesting games on tap. Um, obviously, you know, I think the schedule is uh, – Kind of cooled off a bit after that, you know, really hot start, you know, some really exciting games, you know, the first couple of weeks. And um, I think teams are now in the, uh, you know, the thick of uh, non-league play. Bval play is actually starting this week. NCL1 play started a couple of weeks ago. But, yeah, you know, just teams are kind of rolling along right now. Um, you know, I, you know, the I think the uh, schedule hasn't uh, been as tough for, for a lot of teams, but there have still been some interesting games going on. And, um uh yeah um can i know you were obviously at, at 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 windsor dublin last week windsor finally gets in the you know got in the win column uh, we will touch on that one in a bit um touch on ranchos uh a big win over freedom jacob pruitt another huge game surprise surprise um newman keeps rolling a uh, big win over De Anza, and then we'll touch on uh, a few other games like casa um balboa ukai santa rosa uh, montgomery and then uh, sonoma valley and Roseland prep but um before we get into all that um I, I guess kind of I'll, I'll I'll throw it over to you real quick. But yeah, what do you think about last week's schedule? I mean, not a ton of surprises, but uh, some good wins for some good teams. I thought. Yeah, yeah, I think I think all of the, all the teams we 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 expected to win. I, I guess kind of won, albeit there were some there were some interesting interesting wins for sure. Um, I do want to point out. I, I don't know if this is kind of a milestone, I guess, but this is the twentieth episode of the PD Preps podcast. Uh, so get some confetti. Big, confetti uh, I know, I know. Can, can, can we do that? Can we do that effect? I, I, I don't know. But uh, but uh, number number two, number two zero. Um, so thank you guys for sticking with us for all twenty episodes. Um, um, but yeah, cool. Anyways, uh, yeah. Uh, not not really. Didn't really have too many surprises. Um, everyone kind of held firm in in what we expected them to do. Um, Gus, we're going to throw it back to you, though, because uh, I know you were at the game of the week, which was actually probably one of our only surprises, if any. Uh, Maria Carrillo, Petaluma, I'll uh, let you take this one. Yeah, I mean, again, like we said, I kind of not many surprises, but this was certainly a surprise. Um, and uh, and before I say that too, just, yeah, 20 episodes. Thanks to everyone who's watched, listened, subscribed, all those fun things. Um, we do get some good feedback from this. And I know, uh, again, a lot of the, a lot of the kids who we cover will likely, you know, like to like to watch and listen to this. And um, same with the parents and the coaches and stuff. So thanks to everyone who's tuned in and it's been fun to do so. Um, but yeah, Carrillo 42, Petaluma 21, um, certainly a surprise, I think, in both of our books. Um, uh, last year's game, obviously very exciting, you know, Petaluma won 21-20 on a last second touchdown by backup quarterback, Asher Levy, um, really dramatic ending on that one. One of a few really just kind of tough losses for Carrillo uh, and one of a couple, um, you know, kind of miracle wins for Petaluma, you know, last year. But this year, um, not the case. There would be no miracle comeback. So it kind of seemed like there was, you, you know, there would um, actually there in the third, you know, Carrillo was up 21-0 at halftime. Like first two plays, they found the end zone. A huge game from Wyatt Olson. He had a 45-yard touchdown on the second play of the game to to you know kind of set the tone early. Um, but yeah, Korea was all Korea in the first half. They led 21 to zero. Could have been 21 to eight, um, but Pedalum got got an interception in the end zone. I think at the last minute or two um, before the half. Um, and then yeah, second half it it was like all right, like this is kind of all Korea here, and you know Petaluma being a very you know run heavy team, it's like all right, they really have some have some ground to make up here. And all of a sudden, um, Asher Stellars like returned the second half kickoff for a touchdown, and it's like oh hey wait we might have a game here. Petaluma showing some life. Um, great home crowd too for Petaluma. Um, good student section. Kids are all dressed up, um, going crazy. Um, so definitely a fun environment. Haven't haven't been actually in in a in a good one of those environments. I, I don't think yet this year. So that was, that was fun to see. Um, but yeah, so uh, so Stolarzik gets that second half kickoff for you know return for a touchdown. Um, Korea gets a stop and then Petaluma scores again. Uh, or, I'm sorry, Korea gets stopped and then Petaluma scores again. So all of a sudden, Petaluma scores on its first two possessions. That's 21-14, and you're thinking, oh, there we go, we got a game. Um, and then Korea came, comes back really quickly, gets a score. Then a stop, um, and then a score again, and that was basically the game right there. So close there for a minute. Petaluma, um, you know, showed some life, but yeah, Carrillo, um, Carrillo probably played its best game of the year, I'd say, in this one. Um, you know, last, you know, week one, 
you know, they had, they had a, you know, they, they, they routed skyline 52 zero and, you know, their head, you know, the uh, Korea's head coach, Jay Higgins even said, he's like, yeah, he's like, I don't know if we like learned too much about our team from that game. Um, and then uh, last week they, uh, they lost to Benicia, you know, they decided to go for a, uh, for a game winning touchdown instead of a game tying field goal in the final minutes and they didn't get it. So tough loss there, but yeah, they, they really kind of, you know, bounced back strong with this win this week. Um, Wyatt Olson, like I said, huge game. He had four touchdowns. Um, Andy also had a fumble rec- fumble recovery on defense. He had three rushing touchdowns and one receiving uh, touchdown. Um, the the, the yeah, it was first four touchdowns of the game actually for Carrillo. Um, his receiving touchdown was a 65 yarder uh, catch and run from Cooper Bluestone, their sophomore quarterback, who I do want to talk about too. He's been very very good this year. Um, and then Lucas Sahota had the final two touchdowns, uh, rushing touchdowns for Carrillo. Um, but yeah, I mean, Petaluma, you know, like we, you know, we, we were pretty high on them this year and I still think that they'll, that they'll be a good team, you know, health was standing. Um, but, and, and again, they rushed for over 250 yards, you know, this game. Um, but it was, uh, it felt, it, it didn't feel like that much. I mean, really like Korea, Korea's, you know, it's kind of front line. Dominic Kayed, Nick Lane up there at the, uh, or I'm sorry, not, um, Noah Lane, sorry, not Nick Lane. It's the second time we've gotten his name wrong. Um, Noah Lane, um, uh, really good there up front, um, you know, on that defensive line for the Pumas, um, you know, Korea's D forced three turnovers, you know, a couple, yeah, you know, like I said, Olsen's fumble recovery, Nick Harriman had, had, uh, a, an interception and that, um, Karis Coulter also had a fumble recovery too. So, um, yeah, that Korea D is legit. Um, their running offense is really good. And, uh, Cooper Bluestone again, sophomore quarterback, he's stepped in and looked really comfortable so far, um, through three games, uh, 186 yards passing. He, you know, he did have a pick, but he had a good, uh, you know, that long touchdown to, to, to Wyatt Olson and, you know, with Korea's wing T offense, you know, they're not going to throw the ball a ton. Um, but man, you know, like Cooper has some zip on the ball, you know, when he's asked to kind of, you know, make some stuff happen with his feet, he can do that. He extends plays like get has some good touch for a sophomore and he's really stepping into a good role. So Korea has a uh, Korea set, I think for the next couple of years at that position. Um, but yeah, just a really, really strong showing from from Carrillo doubling up Petaluma. Um, you know, again, Petaluma is probably going to be one of our next teams into the, you know, into our top five. And I think that th- that title might have to go to Carrillo now. You know, Carrillo is probably probably going to be, um, you know, right there on the bubble, you know, for our you know top five rankings. And yeah, I mean, I think if they if they play how they played on um, on Friday, you know, in league, um, I think uh, I think, they're you know, They'll give St. Vincent a really good run for their money for that NBL Redwood title this year. So really strong showing for, uh, from Carrillo. Not, you know, maybe not the best game from Petaluma. Again, three turnovers. They had a bunch of penalties. Um, not their sharpest performance. Um, and again, you know, they just kind of got into a big hole that they couldn't climb out of, but showed some fight late. Um, Chase Miller, who's, you know, who's had a great year, you know, up to this point, was held under 50 rushing yards. Again, a big testament to Carrillo's defense. Um, and then, yeah, Ryan Landry uh, stepped in at quarterback in the second half. Um, you know, pretty decent, actually. He had some really nice runs, um, you know, running that triple option for for Petaluma, and he completed a 7 to 14 pass for, you know, for 89 yards. And his first pass was pretty funny. He, like, you know, he dropped back and he tried to air one out, and it was just, just kind of a jump ball, and Carrillo's defender hauled it in for an interception. But mm. um, he did come back with a touchdown later on. Um, yeah, so he looked pretty good too, but, you know, again, not a ton of bright spots for Petaluma in that one. Um, but, you know, again, I think the fact that they showed some fight late um, you know, tried to come back, you know, they should be fine this year, but just, uh, just, just not the best, uh, you know, not, not the best showing, for, you know, for them on Friday, but I think they'll be fine, but definitely a very, very impressive win for Korea. So that was, that was my big takeaway in that book. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, 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 uh, I don't think this part of the season, if we would have said Korea was one play away from being three and out and I didn't think, uh, people would have believed right. it to be honest with you. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, <laughs> Great showing for Korea. I mean, we, we, Korea was definitely one of the teams early on, uh, early on this year. You know, they they lost a bunch uh, from last year that mm-hmm. we didn't really know how they were going to look, uh, how they were going to come out too. And uh, pretty sure they just showed us. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I think this is Korea at their best. Um, you know, you know, with that running defense, you know, working really well. You know, their offense, you know, clicking on all cylinders, and that um, they played a very clean game too. Again, you know, outside of the uh, the interception, I don't think they had another uh, turnover on you know, as far as their offense went, but yeah, just a great showing for Carrillo. And again, I think that this is kind of a flash of the potential that they could have this year. So um, yeah, we'll see going forward, but uh, yeah, one other note on this game too, but uh, yeah, Nehemia holiday, uh, Carrillo's um, all league defensive back did, did leave the game with a leg injury. He was on crutches on the sideline. 
Um, don't really have an, have an update on that on that injury, but uh, yeah, it could be a big one going forward as he's their top uh, defensive back, I'd probably say. Um, so we'll see how much time he misses, but that could be a big injury for Korea going forward. But um, all right, enough on that one. Uh, you know, pretty solid game of the week. Um, but again, a bit of a surprise. But outside of that, not a whole lot else, you know, I'd say was uh, was super surprising. But uh, um, Keenan, you were over at the other big local game uh, this week. Um, Windsor finally cracks in the win column, 38-14 uh, over Dublin. Yeah, definitely, definitely, uh, definitely the win wins are needed, right? We 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 talked about it last week how how hungry were they were for that first win, and you know it wasn't going to be easy. You know, Dublin's kind of a it's a, Dublin's a tricky team to figure out. Obviously, they beat the uh, they beat Ukiah pretty handily. They came in three and zero. They um, Dublin. I'm pretty sure I uh, I said this, and and I'm sorry if I got the number wrong, but I'm pretty sure I said that Dublin had won their first three games by an average of 37 points. Um, so D- Dublin yeah. definitely knows how to pu- how to put it on the board, but um, you know, Windsor wearing those National Guard uniforms, uh, uh must have been them or something. But it, uh, you know that they they ended up getting the job done, uh, pulled away late. Uh, it was a tale of two halves, though. I will say, um, Windsor line definitely had its best uh, best game so far. They just need to bring it all all together. I, I know that was a question mark that you pointed out weeks and weeks ago. Uh, what was their line coming into the season, considering how much they lost on that offensive defensive line. Um, but when I say they need to bring it all together in terms of <laughs> the offense can't play good one half and then not good the second half. And then the defense can't play good in the first half and only good in the second half. Um, they they, they got to stay consistent on that line, but it seems like they are running into form, which is good. Um, Judson Anderson kicked things off with a 41-yard rushing TD, uh, just barreled his way, uh, <laughs> just does what Judson does. I don't know. Uh, and then he had two passing TDs in the first half, one to Joseph Campbell, and then one as time was expiring to Gunnar, Gunnar Erickson on a beautiful throw to the right pylon. Um, if the offense was doing well, the defense didn't do so hot in the first half. Uh, Dublin converted pretty much every fourth down they could. Um, Jack Duncan, their their dual threat quarterback, was giving him problems on the ground. Uh, you know, the the second Windsor secondary was playing very well, but that would just open up gaps for for Duncan to exploit on the ground. And mm-hmm. I remember one time, I remember one fourth down, Duncan broke open for a forty yard scramble um, that ended up setting up setting up a TD. Um, that wasn't the case in the second half. In the second half, defense uh, stepped up clearly. Dante Sui with a big scoop and score from 30 yards out to kind of put the stamp on it. Um, and he also had a big, uh, big fourth down stop as well. Knocked it out of the receiver's hands. Uh, I believe it was in within the within the uh, Windsor 20 as well when that happened. Uh, he big day for him. Uh, so so kudos kudos to you, Dante. Um, kind of quiet. Quiet day for Ian Anderson, uh, even though still 85 yards receiving. Yeah, um, quiet by his standards. Yeah, quiet by his standards, exactly. I know they have played some great teams so far, um, mm-hmm. so I'm sure his stats will kind of rise uh, rise as, as, as the schedule goes on this season. Um, but, uh, yeah, Windsor... Windsor needed the win. Uh, they, they got it done. Max McFerrin had a big run, uh, rushing TD to to put things away. Thirty eight fourteen was the final score. Definitely the win Windsor needed um, heading into this heading into this week, uh, in the next two weeks as well. Uh, but uh, still, Gus, I mean Windsor is one one and one, and I don't think anybody would have said that after these first couple weeks. Uh, one more thing I want to talk about before I throw it over to you. Uh, Wyatt Morris uh, injured his knee. Uh, was helped off the field in a collision with Hayden Anderson. Uh, Hayden was fine, but Wyatt Morris was definitely shaken up on that knee. He was kind of limped off uh, under his own power a little bit, but was certainly helped. Uh, definitely had his uh, knee on ice and uh, and was carted off, I believe, right before halftime. Um, uh, Coach, Coach Dean Sexton said he's getting an MRI this week. I'm not sure when that will be, but that will definitely tell us more about when and if if Wyatt Morris is going to be out for a lengthy period of time, but one of their betting running running backs, one of their better special teams guys, one of their better defensive guys, uh, definitely yeah. out. So pretty, uh, pretty big loss if he is out for a substantial amount of time, but, uh, yep. Windsor gets in that win column, Gus. Yeah, that's, that's tough. Um, obviously, you know, wish, wish Wyatt the best on his recovery. Um, you know, I mean, this is, you know, the nature of football, it's a dangerous game, you know, people will get hurt. So I'm um, just hoping it's nothing too serious and that we get to, you know, see some, see why. And then also same thing with, you know, Nehemia for, uh, for Korea too, uh, back on the, back on the field again this season. So, um, 
yeah, could be a big loss, but uh, yeah, we'll see. But you know, like again, like you said too, they have a a, a ton of depth at that position. So um, you know, yeah. any number of guys, I think you know, can fill in and um and 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 pick up the slack. But yeah, should you know, could be a big loss. If, you know, if he's out for some time, but we'll, we will see. Um, all right, transitioning over here uh, um to the uh, the Jacob Pruitt show over at Ranch Patati. Um, the, the human cheat code. <laughs> man, he is uh he's on a different level right now. Um. Ranch Patati 39, Freedom 20. Um, yeah, Freedom again came into this one, uh, you know, winless, you know, three, uh, you know, they came in, uh, you know, playing the uh, the hardest schedule in the North Coast section, I believe, you know, or I think in all, all of the North Coast section, if not just, you know, Division 2, but um, – uh, you know, Ranch Katati was the quote unquote weakest team that they had played so far. Uh, and Ranch Katati handled, handled them pretty easily um, again behind the massive game from Jacob Pruitt. Uh, eight for 11 passing, 185 yards, three, three passing touchdowns, and 195 yard rushing touchdown or rushing yards with three touchdowns. Um, <laughs> I was going to say this. Uh, I was going through again. I just, I, you know, I was going through his numbers earlier. Um, and yeah, last three games, he has almost 1,100 total yards. He has 17 touchdowns. Um, and he's gone for over 180 yards, I believe, in uh, his last three games. And he has at least 275 yards, uh, total yards um, in each of his last three games. So the guy is on a different level right now. Um, the only thing is that his his offense is kind of the only offense that Ranch is getting right now. Um, you know, uh, kind of some quieter games, you know, from guys like Potu or, you know, um, you know, Gio Martinez had a good game, you know, receiving, you know, he had 121 yards with two touchdowns. You know, the big beneficiary of, you know, of that passing game. Um, but yeah, I mean, Rancho was always going to be a big run team this year. And so far, it's been a big Jacob Pro run team <laughs> this year. You know, I mean, I know Potu had that had that three touchdown game early on. Um, and he and he definitely has been the second best back for that team, but it, it is all Jacob Pruitt right now. So um, and the guy is on again on a different level. But um, yeah, I mean, the craziest part about this, too, is that he had, you know, um, you know, over like what, close to 400 yards, you know, total yards of offense. And that was all in the first half. Essentially, he was resting. Mid, he was resting midway through the third quarter. Um, Rancho's backups, you know, came in the game and that was kind of the end of that. But yeah, all Rancho Rancho starting to. You know, again, round you know, rounded to form. I think just like Windsor, you know, it was going to take them a few weeks to kind of figure out what they had. You know, Windsor had that really hard strength of schedule to start off. You know, Rancho had a bunch of young players. You know, a lot of guys trying to fill in from last year's team. Um, and I think those guys are starting to you know to establish themselves in their roles more. So, um, Rancho is heading into its bye week, I believe, this week. So they are off, um, and I think they open league the following week. Let me just double check on the schedule. Uh, yeah, that's correct. So, but they're the, yeah, they're off, but they, uh, they open or they play, um, they host Pleasant Valley from Chico on the 29th before league play opens, uh, in early October. So, um, yeah, we're two weeks away from NBL play here, Keenan, which is kind of crazy to think. Uh, Breezing through it, man. Breezing through like it. It flies by. Um, but yeah, a couple other guys to highlight. Yeah. Like, you know, like I said, Gio Martinez, two receiving touchdowns, um, on three catches for 121 yards. A very efficient day for, for Gio. And then, uh, Tyler Shock also had two interceptions. Uh, on defense as well. So yeah, Rancho starting to, uh, starting to click, um, you know, again, their offense was never going to be the, uh, you know, question mark. This is their, uh, their all three games. They've been in, you know, in the thirties, you know, the fewest points they've scored is 34 and that was in their, their loss to Redwood. So mm -hmm. their offense is rolling right now. Um, it's just, uh, can they, can they keep teams out of the end zone and, um, 20 points is definitely an improvement, but, uh, but yeah, we'll see Pleasant Valley. I know is all is, is always a tough, um, you know, tough, hard nosed, gritty, you know, running, you know, running team from uh, the Northern section. So could be an interesting matchup, but, uh, yeah, Rancho again, going into their bye week three, one great start for them. Um, yeah. Anything, anything, uh, anything on this one before we, uh, we, we keep moving here through these games. Yeah, yeah, I think I think to your point about that young defense, obviously that's just going to come with experience. You, you, mm -hmm. you know those those, and and it looks like they've they've already gotten some of that experience. It's already showed a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's uh, there. You know, I'm, I'm sure their defense is gonna is gonna shore up here in the next couple of weeks. And but I will say this: Pleasant Valley has got a sour taste in their mouth because Rancho beat them at their homecoming last year up there. So. Uh, <laughs> They're, they're definitely going to come out swinging. So that, that'll be an interesting, uh, interesting game to, to, uh, to watch, but guys, should we, uh, should we take a look at some, uh, some of the other games before we head into our other stuff here? 
Yeah, let's um, let's finish off with our uh, with our last two teams in our top five that uh, that were in action last week. And St. Vincent obviously was off last week, um, but uh, our top ranked team, uh, which took over the number one spot last week, Cardinal Newman, will be hanging on to that spot this week. Uh, they destroyed De Anza, unsurprisingly, fifty nine to seven. Um, running clock, second half, forty two zero by the half. You know, Newman was up. Um, yeah, this was. Uh, this was a clinic um, about like, again, you know, five, five new players caught touchdowns. What else can we say? <laughs> huh? what else can we say? <laughs> I mean, 59, seven, this is, this is about what, you know, what you expected. Good teams will yeah. blow out bad teams and that's what happened here. So um, yeah, Zach Coleman again, over hundred yards. It's now first hundred yards in his first, in the first four games of the year. Also with three more touchdowns. I don't know what that brings him to for the year, but he has uh, again, been the lead back by far in that, uh, on that offense and he's having a great great start to his senior year um nine touchdowns uh already for the kid on the ground and one more uh in the air so 10 10 on the year for him already um but yeah i mean again like i said five players caught touchdowns um or five players had touchdowns sorry um there were also three defensive slash special team touchdowns in this one um jamari gentry dylan webb both had pick sixes and then jonah bertoli uh, had a punt return touchdown um bertoli also had two don't don't tell nicky here about that one yeah, watch out. It's come, coming for you, Nick. Coming for your records. Um, uh, Bertoli also had two receiving touchdowns on the day. So he's, again, uh, uh, Jonah Bertoli, um, you know, sophomore wide receiver, you know, more of this really good young talent that Newman has. Um, definitely got to watch. And he'll, uh, again, he's he's been, I think, you know, the top receiver for the, you know, for the Cardinals this year. So got to watch out for this year and then the coming years for sure. Um, and then, yeah, Newman also got some reps from both their uh, of their quarterbacks, Jason Coulter and Wyatt Connectly. So, um, just a team effort, you know, again, you know, you play an inferior team, you know, you want to go up big, you know, you know, play mistake free football. Seemed like Newman did that. Um, yeah. And then they got a bunch of guys, some reps as well. So, you know, solid, solid, big, you know, non-league route, you know, Newman is looking like, um, you know, again, they're taking care of business this year, you know, all in, in all their games really, um, you know, Vacaville again, still a huge win. You know, beating Vintage was, you know, obviously, obviously a big win. And then, um, you know, Casa again, you know, they handled them, the, you know, pretty well there. So um, probably good to, I guess, just kind of let the reins off the offense here a little bit too. I mean, 59 points is, I think that was the most I saw Newman scored in a game in something like six or seven years. Um, definitely the most under, uh, you know, under Newman head coach, you know, Richard Sanchez, who's been there. This is his third season. So, um Yep. Yeah, I mean, Newman's offense, again, just explodes in this one. And again, much thanks to, you know, some of that defense, too. I think St. Mary, or I think uh, De Anza scored their only touchdown, like, late in the game when it was, you know, running clock fourth quarter. So, um, handy, or, you know, handle the... Uh, a convincing handy or, or the handily beat them. What, what word am I looking for here? Keenan? I don't know. Uh, my caffeine <laughs> is not fully kicked in yet. So um, <laughs> anyway, Newman, we'll move on, but Newman 59, seven, you know, uh, 59, seven over De Anza, a huge win for them playing uh, St. Mary's Albany this next week. So um, I, again, I, I, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but it's looking like Newman is going to be heading into league play in a couple of weeks uh, undefeated. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll see. I will. Yeah. I, I mean, you, you kind of said it all, but uh, but big, big, pretty, pretty expected route there from from uh, from the Cardinals for sure. Um, yep. Let's head over to uh, Casa Grande at uh, Beaten Balboa 28 to 14. That's Casa's third straight win after their opening league loss to uh, or not league, but opening week loss to Cardinal Newman, which actually for Newman that that. That that them beating Casa is looking better by the week, because um, because Casa is definitely is definitely uh, sh- showing out. Third straight win. Defense shows up yet again. Cody Cornelius had um, six total tackles, three sacks. Cade Ray had eight tackles. Another pair of touchdowns for Zach Carrera. He's quietly putting together a great season on the ground. Um, interesting interesting note here. The Gauchos started Joey uh, Joey Serta, sophomore Joey Serta at quarterback. He played the entire first half. And then uh, Danny Mercado came in for the second half, uh, who's normally their incumbent starter. I'm pretty sure he he injured uh, his ankle a little bit uh, in the third quarter at Ukiah. So that could be uh, a mm-hmm. reason why they, they went to Joey Sert in the first half, but also could have just changed things up and, and experimented kind of. Um, they beat Balboa 28 to 14. Um, this was going to be a big big uh big game for our rankings wise i'm not going to spoil anything gus but uh but yeah 
28 to 14 win for the Gauchos. They seem to be clicking a little bit. Um, and uh, and yeah, anything else? Anything else on the Gauchos? Uh, no, I mean, again, like, um, you know, Antonio even said, you know, after the game, he said, you know, the good thing is about our, you know, good thing about our defenses that keep us in these games. So, um, yeah, I mean, again, it's Casa Grande as a, as a defensive, defensive, uh, uh, I guess, juggernaut, for lack of a better word. Um, not something I think many of us expected, but, uh, yeah, I mean, cre- credit to, credit to Antonio and the Gacha staff. And again, their players, obviously, above, you know, above all else, but they've been playing, you know, re- really well this year. And, um, yeah, uh, I think, I think the VVAL will definitely be, you know, a challenge this year. I mean, vintage just, you know, looks really good still. American Canyon, you know, still is going to be up there. Um, and then we'll see if Petaluma can kind of, you know, um, uh, shake off last week's loss. And I think they should. But, um, yeah, I mean, Casa Grande is for sure looking like one of the stronger teams in the VBL this year. So we'll see how that kind of plays out going forward. But, yeah, I mean, the I think the emergence of Zach Carrera has been huge, like you said. And then, again, you know, their their defensive line has just been, you know, massive as well. So, um yeah, I mean, again, solid win for Casa. Um, you know, like you know, like you said too. You know, this is uh, this is, this definitely has an impact on our rankings. You know, we were looking at you know Balboa had played Saint Vincent the week prior. Bal- uh, Saint Vincent beat them by twenty three. Casa beats them by fourteen. Casa is five. What, what did we do? What did four. we do? You're gonna have to stay tuned a little longer to see what we what we decided for our rankings. But uh, yeah, definitely had an impact on that one. Um, well, quickly moving on, last couple of games here we'll we'll touch on, but uh, yeah, Ukiah, um, yeah, 28-21 over Santa Rosa. Uh, Ukiah led big early, Santa Rosa uh, clawed their way back to make it a one-score game late. Um, but yeah, Ukiah went with a uh, went with a quarterback. Um, is that Bo David at quarterback? A sophomore. Sophomore um, Bo David. Bo David. Yep. In for uh, in for Gabe Gonzalez there, but yeah, Bo was uh, 14 to 20 passing, 175 yards or 170 yards. Threw a touchdown, ran for another. So uh yeah, we'll see. Um we'll see kind of how that how that plays out up there in Ukiah. But I know that they also have a, uh, you know, Ukiah, uh, this is also the last game that they were gonna be without um, you know, some of their some of their key players like oh, uh Shea right. Paris, Zach Martinez, who were both you know ejected in the first game for uh, a fighting incident. Um but uh yeah, they're gonna come back this week and um yeah, it should be a very interesting week for Ukiah and Paul Cronin um as he's heading back. Uh Ukiah is heading up uh or coming south, I guess, uh, to play Windsor. Obviously Cronin coached there for a year. Um, you know, led Windsor to an NCS championship there. Uh most of Windsor's staff is uh, you know, followed Paul or followed Cronin over from from Newman. You know, they're all still there. So some fun, some fun little storylines kind of, you know, over there in this one. But uh yeah, I mean Ukiah. You know, they had that kind of rocky, you know, rocky game against um against Dublin. Uh, and then again, they all, you know, they, all, you know, they, they, they lost to Casa Grande as well. So good bounce back win here for them going into that Ukiah game and they get some reinforcements as well. So, um, yeah, Ukiah may be trending in the right direction for, uh, for this week. Yep, no doubt. One of the one of the more entertaining players to watch in the in the North Bay, I think, Amari Phillips Porter. I call him OPP. Uh, two <laughs> touchdowns again. Um so yeah, it'll, it'll be interesting, but we'll 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 do all that preview stuff with our preview and predictions later on in the episode. So stay tuned for that about the whole mm-hmm. Windsor Ukiah thing. Um, Talon Patrick putting together a pretty nice season as well. Ten pa- eight caught ten yeah. passes for ninety eight yards and two touchdowns. Um, definitely, uh, we were talking about this off camera, but definitely in that Nolan Frost role from this year for for this year. You know, the big Nolan Frost six four wide receiver who was was a pretty uh, pretty good target to have last year for the uh, for the Panthers, but. Um, Talon Patrick definitely, definitely took has that mantle this year. Um, all right, let's kind of move on. Uh, Montgomery uh, picked up a picked up a big win over Hayward, thirty four twenty four. It was twenty one seven Monty at half. Hayward came back. Montgomery ended up ho- holding on. Uh, unlike last week, they definitely learned from their mistake um, and, and and put this one to bed. Um, but uh, Gus, it seemed like there was a pretty big injury happening uh, for the Vikings. Definitely not not what they wanted to they wanted to see. Yeah, they had uh, their their top running back, um, uh, Quentin Perez, a junior. I mean, he broke his arm uh, in the um, broke his arm in the fourth quarter, unfortunately. Um, so he might be out. I, uh, I think Burgess Patton, Montgomery's head coach, said he said he'll be out about four weeks. Um, which you know is 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 big you know at this point in the season, but uh, you know it does it does leave you know leave the uh, the door open for him to return at some point this year. So hopefully he uh, he heals up. But um, 
Yeah, he had a big game, and this was it was it, it was funny because um you know Patton was saying I talked to him on Saturday after the game, and Patton Patton had said he's like coming into this game he's like I I did not think that we you know we were going to be able to run the ball, you know Hayward has I think like something like nine or ten guys like over two hundred and fifty pounds in their line, and they even have like two guys like over three hundred pounds in their line, including a three hundred ninety pound lineman. Um, so they had some huge, huge dudes and, and, um, and, but Montgomery had a lot of success, you know, running the ball. I mean, Quentin had 170 yards rushing, you know, before he broke his arm. And actually it was that 390 pound guy who I guess tackled him in the fourth quarter. And then, uh, Quentin came up, you know, holding his arm. So I was the um, fourth quarter too. Uh, that's tough. I, I, yeah, I don't know about you, Keenan, but I don't think I would, I would enjoy getting tackled by a 390 pound, uh, person. Um, that that's, uh, one of the reasons why, uh, Football was not for me. I was a basketball, baseball kid growing up. So, um, but that Same right there, here. that's why I'm not a football player. That's why I'm a tennis um, guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, anyway, but uh, no, very good, uh, a very good win for, uh, uh, for, um, yeah, for Montgomery. Um, you know, uh, last week again, they, uh, you know, tough loss to Napa, you know, again, last second score, but really good bounce back win here. Um, one of the guys that kind of stepped up after, uh, Quentin got hurt was Amasi. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing this name right. And Virtus even has a hard time pronouncing it. I believe it's Ruba, Ruba Kawaka. I think that's correct. R- um, Ruba Waka? Ruba Waka? Uh, something like that. I think there's a K in there too. Um, He's a uh, Fiji kid. Um, this, is, this is actually a season debut. I think he had to go. I think we're just saying he had to go back home to Fiji for something. Um, but yeah, he's also a big, um, uh, big rugby kid too. So good athlete, shifty kid. Um, he should be filling in there for Quentin, I think, while Quentin's out. But uh, yeah, um, again, good win for Monty. Uh, solid game for uh, Bobby McGovern. Um, some good, you know, good rushing yards on the ground for him. A um, couple picks, but, you know, it didn't really hurt them a ton. And then Isaiah as they are right to, uh, you know, they're, they're stud wide receiver linebacker and a touchdown and a pick six. So good game for those guys. Um, yeah, Monty two and two, uh, they're heading into, a, I believe their non-league finale this week, um, against St. Vincent that's produced some in some entertaining matchups the last couple of weeks and or the last couple of years. And, um, I think, uh, again, St. Vincent kind of, kind of ate their lunch last year. That was a, that was a, that was a blowout. Um, that was that definitely was, uh, a surprise for us. Yeah. That was one of the big, big surprises of the year last year. So um, I'm sure Montgomery, again, the guys who are back, uh, still have that one, uh, you know, in the back of their mind. So we'll see how they, how they respond this coming week, but yeah, it should be a fun game. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, you know, again, good, good job. You know, Good job, Montgomery, for, you know, holding off a comeback, you know, unlike last week and, you know, um, you know, learning as a team. So I think that's definitely a good, good win for them. Um, anything on that one before we get to our last two? Nope. Let's uh, let's go right on over to our to our last two. Sonoma Valley picking up a big win, 31-20 over Tara Linda. It was a game where they trailed for a lot of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, 21, 21 uninsured points in the second half. Um you know, they were trailing 2017. Uh, Angelo uh, Cano, I believe, is how you pronounce that. Sorry if I uh, <laughs> didn't pronounce it right. It should be a lot a lot easier, but, but uh, with a huge interception, that's at a Boston Hughes uh, second touchdown of the day of the game. P.I. was called on that touchdown, too, so it must have been an amazing catch. Um, but, yeah, Hughes had two TDs. Hudson Giorita, uh, one of the better wide receivers, I think, in my opinion, um, in in the area, 11 receptions, 130 yards. Um, but after after Hughes' second TD, it was all defense from there. Uh, they forced a turnover on downs, and and all they needed was one more was one more first down on offense to close the thing out. But Lee Scott ran it for a TD, so uh, definitely definitely put a stamp on it. Um, big, nice nice to get back in the win column for Sonoma Valley. Keep in mind, uh, we talked about this last week, but they were they were uh, you know one play away from being three and one on the season. Um, but now it's, uh, heading over to Viva play and they open up with a huge matchup with, uh, Petaluma, who is not going to be happy after what Carrillo did to them, uh, did yep. to them this week. Yeah, this is, uh, this, this is, this is, this, is, this could be tough sledding for Sonoma Valley coming up here. Um, you know, again, Viva play is definitely, I'd say the hardest, um, you know, part of their schedule, you know, I think non-league play is where they can definitely stack up some wins and even the Viva even some of the, I guess, the bottom teams like, um, you know, Napa is even looking much improved this year. I mean, Napa's 4-0 now. Um, Justin Siena could be a tough out as well. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, again, you know, I I, I think outside of that, I mean, American Canyon's really good. Vintage is really good. Uh, Petaluma and Costa are both really good. So we'll see if Sonoma Valley can can, um, can maybe surprise some teams this year. But, yeah, I mean, at, at, at the moment, they're on the outside looking in for, uh, for one of those um, – 
eight playoff spots in the NCS Division Five. So we'll see if they can uh, if they can pull out some wins here late. You know, um, yeah, I mean they're going to have to if they want to get back to the playoffs again this year. But again, very good win for them. Um, you know, huge comeback. Um, you, again, good to see that from a Summit Valley team. That and again, you and I both were both both were pretty high on coming into this year. And you know, yep. I, I, you know, still some growing pains. You know, new head coach. Um, but again, I you know heading in the right direction. I think after this one. So sure. Good win, good win there. Um, speaking of heading in the right direction, uh, our last game we'll touch on, but um, Rosen University Prep, 34, Calistoga, 20, and eight-man action. Um, RUP, this is the first time. Again, RUP is a relatively new program. Only been around for like four or five years. Um, first time they've ever beaten Calistoga. Calistoga has been a, an eight-man program for, I don't know how long, but much more established than Rosen Prep. Yeah. Um, very, again, first time that, you know, REP ever, ever beaten them. Big win for them. Um, Rosen Prep is now three and one best record in their, in their league heading into league play this week. I believe this, this week or next week. Um, but yeah, I mean, REP, uh, it just keeps getting better. I mean, again, this is a program that, you know, like I said, has been, is, is relatively new. They don't have a ton of players, but, um, they have a lot of guys who have bought in really quickly and have, are, you know, adjusted to the eight man game. Eight, eight man's very different, you know, is, is a very different game than 11 man, obviously. Um, but yeah, I mean, just just a lot of good athletes, guys who are uh, you know naturally talented and you know picking up the game really you know really quickly. Um, one of those guys is Hector Marufo. I hope I'm again pronunciations. I always hope you get them right, but <laughs> not all the time. But uh, he had the last two touchdowns. Uh, you know, go ahead score early in the fourth to make it 26-20, uh, and then he had a game ceiling uh, touchdown reception um, not too long after that in the fourth to, to to put the game away. But yeah, our RUP had to rally, I believe, from a one score deficit at the halftime. Um, yeah, to win this one. So definitely a good win, a very good win for RUP. And um, yeah, three and one heading into league play this week. But um, love to see some of these small teams, you know, thriving like this. And um, yeah, we'll see if uh, I know LC Allen has been off for the last couple of weeks, you know, speaking of eight man, but they uh, they get back to action this week against Branson, which is a really tough, tough test, really uh, tough test. But um, again, uh, just with all these small programs that are, you know, working their way through eight man, um, it, it's just good to see success. So um, love to see that from REP and hopefully LC Allen can, uh, can continue the trend. So, um, Keenan, that about does it. Any other games that we might've missed out on last week? Again, I think that was all the big ones. I, I, I think so too. I, I, I do want to just highlight one more thing for, for REP. That's they scored the exact same amount of points that they scored last year against, uh, Calistoga, but last year they lost 51, 30. So 51, 34. So, uh, defense definitely must have must have shored up. But let's get to the juicy stuff. Gus, our rankings. <laughs> you know it. You love it. Our our PD press rankings. Um, unchanged top three. Uh, Cardinal Newman at, stays at one after their uh, demolishing over De Anza. Windsor stays at two. They picked up their first win. We talked about it earlier on in the episode. So if you're just joining us, head on back to the beginning. Uh, we go through all the games this week. And then Rancho Katati, big win over Freedom. They stay at three. But Gus, uh, this is gonna uh, <laughs> four and five spots. This is our this is the first time we've ever done this here on the PD Preps podcast. We have a tie for fourth. That's all right. Casa Grande and St. Vincent tying for the four spot this week. Um we were we were teasing it earlier. We didn't really know what to do. Um, but, uh, yeah, we decided to, to, uh, put those two teams in a tie. So tie fourth, Casa Grande at three and one, St. Vincent at three and oh, they were both in the four spot on the bubble, Maria Carrillo, Petaluma, Annalie, and, uh, and Ukiah. Gus, you want to make <laughs> well, some sense? I, I'm already, this? I'm already just envisioning just all the, cause again, I'm, I'm going to go cover the St. Vincent, uh, Casa game this, uh, this week. And, Monster, or sorry, Monster. the St. Vincent Montgomery game this week. And I just, I just know I'm going to hear about it from those guys. We so, wish they so. were playing Casa, but we wish they were playing Casa. Right. Um, yeah, I just know I'm going to hear about it from those guys, but yeah, call it a cop out, call it whatever you want. Um, but just kind of look, you know, looking at the, at the resume of these two teams, yeah, obviously St. Vincent was off last week, but Casa three and one has played a harder schedule. Um, or I guess we'll back up. Um, yes, they did not beat Balboa by as many or more points than St. Vincent, which we kind of said last week was you know was going to be one of our deciding factors. But taking a step back and looking at the whole resume, the whole body of work for both teams, Casa has just played a harder schedule. Their only loss has been to a very, very good Newman team. They put up a pretty good fight, actually, in that one. Um, and, yeah, it, it was – it was we couldn't put – just because of the of the Balboa, um, you know, scoring differential, 
we couldn't we didn't really feel like putting uh it was right to put casa alone at four jumping saint vincent just because again they did beat a mutual opponent by more but i think the strength of schedule obviously matters a lot in this situation so um we figured it was probably the the fairest thing to do was put them at a tie and again people are going to be like oh oh, oh," you know one you know people are are going to have you know say one thing or the other about this but um yeah i mean again i just um we would love it if these two teams could play and um and 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 settle the score you know on the field once and for all but um i just think uh you know or we just thought i guess you know until further notice um you know that that strength that strength of schedule does matter um and yeah, I think that's kind of where we're uh, where we're at. But these two teams are very evenly matched, I think, this year. Um, you know, as far as uh, as far as you know, skill level goes. Obviously, Casa has much more players and a bigger roster and stuff. But Saint Vincent has, has a ton of talent, um, and I think they're only going to get better too as as the year goes on. So, um, yeah, we'll see how things kind of play out in league play coming up. Um, you know, Saint Vincent uh, gets back in action this week, obviously against Montgomery, and then. Um, I believe Casa has a bye week this week too, so um, we'll see how St. Vincent fares again. Uh, you know, against a bigger, uh, bigger division team in in, uh, in Montgomery this week, and we'll see how that kind of kind of you know how that kind of plays out with them. You know, with the rankings going forward. But um, yeah, tied four. I believe this is the first tie we've had too in our rankings. You know, we, we've only sure been in this two years, but keeping um, it interesting, man. Keeping we are, man. We, we got, we got, we got to keep the readers, uh, the readers <laughs> interested yeah, somehow. Entertain but, the masses. Exactly. Um, and then, yeah, I think like we said earlier, too, I think Korea is probably that next team in right now. Um, they definitely showed uh, early on that uh, or, you know, they showed this week that, uh, yeah, they um, they're they're probably better than the record might indicate. And, uh, yeah, they took care of Pedlum pretty good this week. Um, sorry, I got to sneeze. Don't no sneeze. sneeze. OK. Don't sneeze. All right. Don't let's sneeze. uh. cut that. Let's uh, <laughs> let's let's. Uh, um, <laughs> That's the yeah, there, by the way. We're not cutting. Oh, you got. Uh, you, oh, you better cut that. <laughs> oh, I have like really bad allergies right now too, so that was fun. Um, all right, Keenan. Moving on to our uh, to our uh, predictions. Um, I had a terrible week. That was probably one of the worst weeks of picking that I've had, maybe ever. Um, yeah, I was pretty surprised. By that was the other big surprise this week, folks. This yeah, there you go. Not, and not any game, but the fact that Gus went six and five. Um, yeah, but yeah, terrible so, week for me. Yeah, <laughs> Gus won six and five. I went eight and three, so I clearly won the league, uh, won the week, uh, sneaking them back up on you, Gus. But you still have a one game advantage over me. Overall, you're thirty one fifteen. I'm thirty and sixteen. Uh, let's see, both got Petaluma wrong. Let's see, both got Montgomery wrong. So good, uh, good, good for some of these teams to prove us wrong for sure. Oh, um, one of these games that we didn't talk about that uh, that is just heartbreaking to me. But um, Healdsburg lost to Kennedy by two points. I chose Healdsburg to win. Um, that was one of the games that I got wrong. Um, yeah, I chose I chose Healdsburg to win. They I believe they, they were, were close, uh, man. They had they it. were winning. They were winning early. I think uh, Kennedy was up 14-7 at the half, and then um, I don't quite know how the second half played out, but Healdsburg just so close to winning. Um, I said it was it was a winnable game. Um, again, I you know last couple weeks I think Healdsburg is uh, has been competitive, so we'll take that. Um, but just a brutal brutal loss they, for my house. They'll get there. They'll get there. Um, let's see. We both got Casa Grande, Sonoma Valley right. Uh, we split Fort Bragg and Cloverdale. You picked Cloverdale. You got that one wrong. I picked Fort Bragg. I got that one right. And then we both picked uh, Calistoga. So, again, credit RUP proving us wrong. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Let's get into uh, let's get into our predictions for this week. Gus, starting with our game of the week, Windsor at Ukiah. I will be there for that one. Um, obviously, biggest story. You kind of touched on it, but. Cronin coming back to to Windsor. Um, he's now up in up in Ukiah. They're having a interesting season up there. Windsor obviously just picked up their their first win. Um, we're both going with Windsor in this one. I don't. I mean, I I would like to say it's going to be close. I don't think it's going to be that close. To be completely honest with you, I just don't don't think Ukiah has rounded into form yet. Um, I know Cronin said well, you'll have to wait till we get to the midway point of the season till we really know what our team is about. Um, so I just don't think Ukiah has found themselves or found their identity yet. And I think Windsor coming off that first win, which makes them breathe a little easier. And and plus they're at home. So I think Windsor's going to take this one. 
Yeah, I think if uh, if if um, if you kind of can keep this close, it would be a big win for them. But yeah, I think they're probably going to be pretty overmatched in this one. Um, Windsor just has too much talent, uh, just a better team um, across the board, I think. Um, but you know, Cronin, Cronin obviously has some. You know, again, he's won two hundred and twenty, some thirty games, some yeah. games. You know, in his career for a reason. Um, he's a very good coach, uh, and I wouldn't. And again, they're getting a few of their top players back, so I wouldn't be surprised if he. Um, you know, has some tricks up his sleeve in this one, but uh, but I think if um, again, if Windsor is as good as we think they are, they should win this game by numerous touchdowns. Um, but again, I think yeah. the storyline will be fun uh, with Cronin going and going back and playing against his old um, his old team and a lot of his old staff. So, should be a fun one uh, out there for game of the week. Yep, no doubt, no doubt. Okay, uh, next one, we're actually going to Napa County for this one. Uh, Napa address in Siena. Um, that frisky Napa team got some telling you. They're, they're the only they're, team in the v The only team in the v is 4-0 right I now. I know. They're, they're taking on uh, – they're traveling to Justin Siena. Justin Siena, um, who tends to have some uh, some good success down there in the lower – in what division are they? Are five, six? I think they're something six like that. still, yeah. Six uh, tend to, tends to have some uh, success in the postseason in Division Six, but uh, they're taking on a Napa team. I think Napa, Napa takes this one um, pretty, uh, pretty handily. Guess what do you think? I don't know if it's going to be handily, but uh, yeah, I mean, Napa has kind of been the one of the surprise teams uh, of the year, I, I, th- I think, of the North Bay. I mean, they haven't been 4-0 in a long time. Um, I mean, I, again, I have to go back and see, but uh, yeah, it's it's been a while since they've been 4-0. So, um, Justin, I think, uh, again, I don't, similar story, I don't know if their record, in the, you know, tells how, you know, if, if, if like, if they're, it, are they as good or bad as the record indicates? I don't quite know. Again, sure. you know, they beat De Anza, they beat Eureka. You know, Eureka's not very good. They, you know, they beat him by four. De Anza has some good athletes. Um, you know, obviously they're winless still, but, you know, they, uh, or I believe they're winless, but, um, yeah, 0-4. Oh um, but, you know, Justin beat them by two, two, you know, you know, by two scores, and then, you know, they lost to St. Helena by, it uh, looks like four scores or something like that, too. So, um, don't quite, you know, again, I think I think Napa's frisky, you know, like we said. You know, for you know, you're not four and zero for uh, for no reason. You know, I think you have to have some talent, and you have to know how to win games, which you know Napa has shown they they know how to do. So, yep. yeah, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Napa wins this one. Uh, Vival opener too for both teams, so it could be a good, uh, um, you know, I mean a, a a good kind of lit you know litmus test for uh, for where these teams actually stack up. I think for the Vival. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, continuing with continuing, excuse me, with the uh, with the Vival openers here, Sonoma Valley at Petaluma. We kind of touched on this earlier. Um, I. Th- believe we will have coverage from this one um but uh yeah it's going to be interesting uh for sure we'll see if sonoma valley can surprise us but uh we're both going with uh, the trojans in this one i think they uh they bounce back after a tough loss to creo i would agree um i think kind of similar thing as uh as the windsor ukai matchup i think petaluma is just a better team i think sonoma valley is probably gonna be a bit outmatched in this one um you know petaluma runs that triple option really you know really well and like you said coming off a loss i think they're going to be uh they're going to be searching for a win so yeah i think petaluma opens viva out play with a pretty convincing win in this one yep okay um closing out our kind of Vival napa slate here i think we're gonna have uh coverage from this one as well but this is definitely the marquee matchup as far as Vival games go and how about it in the Vival opener I guess uh vintage american canyon um we're split on this one i'm going vintage uh you're going with american canyon i think vintage has uh is just going to be too good for American Canyon with uh, American Canyon obviously with the new coach. Um, I just don't think they're they're as good as they were last year. Uh, but Gus, you're going with the Wolves. Tell us why. I think they're better than they were last year. They um uh so far this year they've had a very very difficult uh, a difficult schedule. Um, they only lost to a very good Menlo Atherton team by one. Um. They beat a good Foothill Pleasanton team by two, and then uh, and then last week, um, you know, they had a two score loss against uh, or three score loss against Vanden Fairfield, who's a very good team. So they've been battle tested for sure early on this year. Um, looking at strength of schedule right now, too. Uh, yeah, Vintage has actually played. It looks like objectively a a harder schedule. Just just looking at the uh, the Cal Preps ratings, but um, this yeah. is going to be a. a, a an interesting matchup as far as styles go. I mean, again, I know that American Canyon is uh, definitely a bit of a of a mixed offense team. You know, they love to run the ball. You know, they they but you know this year they are throwing the ball quite a bit more. Um, you know, their quarterback, uh, I believe it's Mason Harris uh, Jr., is also you know a good baseball player too. He's having a great start to the year. Ten touchdowns, you know, 
to three interceptions. Um, you know, vintage is obviously guilt, you know, geared a lot more towards, you know, running, uh, you know, as far as their offense goes. Um, and, uh, and again, defensively too, you know, I think, um, you know, in the Newman game, you know, they, you know, yeah, they went, uh, they kept it close and, you know, I know Holman, you know, had another, you know, really good game, you know, for them, but, um, yeah, I, I just kind of think that with American Canyons athletes versus, you know, vintage is kind of, uh, you know, more old school style smash mouth, you know, style of play. I think American Canyon, if they get up by a couple of scores, I think it might be hard for, for vintage to come back. Um, and I think that's what, you know, what, you know, what's going to happen. So, um, I'm going to go with an upset here, uh, or I, upset or not. I don't know. I mean, I, I think early on these two are, you know, looking like the two top teams, you know, in, in the VBAL this year, you know, I know vintage is one and three very cannons two and two again, like I said, both very hard schedules, but, um, you know, vintage, you know, vintage has been the king of the VBAL, um, you know, since the mm-hmm. VBAL's inception, you know, five years ago. And, um, you know, I know American Canyon has, I think, gotten one, gotten a game or two over them. But, um, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to say I'm going to say American Canyon, you know, pulls this one out and all of a sudden is the team to beat in the VVL. So this would be a huge, huge early uh, early league uh, win for M for M Canyon. I will give them the inside track if they can pull this out. So um, well, for, I'm just, I, I would say for either team, I, I would say this, this, this is I would, a yeah, I would probably sure. agree with that. Yep, I would. I would agree, yeah, I would, I would agree with that, too. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I just think a. Uh, Amcam speed and athleticism um, is just going to out out outdo uh, vintage's um, I guess lack of that <laughs> for, for for lack or of vintage's better. physicality. So, you mean? Yeah, there you go. Physicality. That's a good way to put it. So um, yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Amcam on this one. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll we'll see. That's uh one of our that's our split this week or one of them at least I think. Um. All right. St. Vincent at Montgomery. Um. Gus, you may be there. You may 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 not be there. We'll 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 see. We'll we'll figure all that out. But um, mm-hmm. St. Vincent after having three straight home games on Saturdays is now back to reality. Going uh, playing on Friday nights. Yeah, um. Uh. Obviously, St. Vincent three and zero. Just clinical wins. I know Gus that they lost some guys. They were on by last week. So definitely. Good timing for them to be on by to heal some guys up, hopefully. Um, Montgomery, uh, obviously we talked about them earlier, but uh, last year this was definitely one of our surprises where St. Vincent absolutely bra- broke the brakes off of Montgomery at St. Vincent on Saturday. Um, I think, you know, I don't think it's going to be as bad as it was as it was last year, but I still think uh, St. Vincent, St. Vincent takes it by a couple touchdowns. Yeah, so actually, I think I I had gotten this wrong earlier in the uh, in the podcast where I said St. Vincent actually lost them last couple of years. Uh, I I correct that. Sorry, Montgomery actually beat them two years ago, and then St. Vincent won by uh, uh, yeah, kicked their butt I guess uh, last year. But um, so they split the last two matchups. Obviously, you know St. Vincent had the big one last week. Um, both teams are definitely very different teams now than they than they were last. You know, even last year, um, St. Vincent with a lot of guys gone, Montgomery you know with a lot of guys gone, but. I just think, uh, you know, at this point of the year, um, it's just pretty clear. You know, I, I, I think who the more complete team is right now. St. Vincent's defense has been pretty incredible. You know, Gabe Casanova said, you know, at quarterback has been great. Jack Davis, um, you know, they're kind of, you know, utility do it all. Offensive guys is going to be very hard to stop. And then, uh, you know, I think Montgomery, too, you know, without Quentin Perez going against, one, you know, one of the better defensive lines um, here, I think, in the area with St. Vincent is, is going to be a tough challenge. So I just think St. Vincent has too many advantages and too many spots. Um, and I think that's just uh, that just spells St. Vincent win here. So. Yep. Yep. Couldn't have said any better myself. Um, OK, elite at Annalee. Um I'm doing some research here. Elite is a independent. Uh, they don't belong to any to any league or anything like that. They played five games. They are two and three. Um, probably the school that we're most uh, well known with is St. Patrick St. Vincent out of Vallejo. Um, they lost to them 34-6, but uh, they have they have a 50 point win. They have a 50 point loss. Uh, then they have a 29 point loss. So I don't really know much about him, to be honest with you, Gus. Uh, but we do know about Annalie a little bit, and uh, we know that Annalie is pretty solid this year. So uh, going with the Tigers. This is um, uh, elite. They're the elite Eagles out of Vallejo. They're a charter school. This is their first year of varsity football. Uh, the last two years, they've um, last two years, I think they've been a JV freshman program. So. Gotcha. Very, it's a very new program here, um, but I don't think this is going to be much of a competition. Uh, I think this is all annually in this one. Um, yeah, I mean, again, like you said, don't know a lot about personnel, but just again, based on uh, just kind of some of those early season results and then just knowing that this is their first ever varsity team. Um, I, 
I think Annalee should win by multiple touchdowns here. So uh, I'll Annalee in that one. Yep. Okay. Uh, next one up, Cloverdale at Kelseyville. Cloverdale obviously coming off that super tough loss to Fort Bragg. Um, yeah, we we kind of touched on this last week, Gus, but obviously Cloverdale looking like they need to, you know, it's going to be a minute till they, till they kind of fin- figure things out. And Kelseyville had that amazing ending to last, uh, to last, uh, last year's schedule, obviously through the NCL one in a chaos and an absolute circus, but uh, they came out all, they came out guns blazing this year. Um, they're, they're a yeah. very good team. And, and I think uh, this, this is easily a couple touchdown win for Kelsey Bill. I think so too. Uh, yeah. This is kind of looking like a building year for Cloverdale. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. And then Kelsey Bill too. I mean, Kelsey Bill, interesting, Interestingly enough, though, they were upset last week um, by Middletown by a touchdown. So um, it did kind of early on look like it was going to be a Clear Lake, maybe Kelseyville, maybe a Willits, um, you know, league to play for over there, over there in the NCL one. I, I, you know, I think Clear Lake is obviously the the heavy favorite. Um, but Kelseyville was kind of looking like going to be one of those other teams up there. But Middletown just um, such a solid program was during year out. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I guess you you know you could call it an upset, but um, yeah, I mean again, I think Kelseyville again is is one of those upper echelon teams in the NCL one. I think Cloverdale is probably more towards the bottom, so I think Kelseyville uh, in this one is a pretty easy pick. Yep. Okay. Next one up, uh, Pioneer going all the way up to Eureka. Uh, the Eureka Loggers are zero and four um, losses to Annalee, Justin Siena, Arcata, and Enterprise. Enterprise out of Reading, excuse me. They have a. Uh, Eureka's got a very tough couple games coming up. They have Piner this week, and then they welcome Windsor next week. Uh, so not, not not the greatest couple stretch of games. So yeah, um, you know Piner coming in this game two and two and one uh, do have a winning record. Although coming off a weird seven nothing loss to San Rafael, I think they bounce back pretty easily. And uh, we're going with the prospectors here, Gus. You have the same. Yeah. Uh, so one thing I guess we should say too is that um, is that we do believe that uh, that minor quarterback Matty Erickson is probably going to be out for the year. We we heard it's probably um, an ACL, um, something like that. So um, again, hoping again if if that you know that that's what we've heard. If it's uh, you know maybe it's you know maybe he does come back. Maybe it's not a full a full ACL tear. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, it just just sucks for him. Um, you know, a really fun guy to watch. You know, both in basketball, both in football. So, um, you know, if it is that bad, you know, I you know that sucks for Maddie. You know, wishing him the best. You know, with his recovery. And and if not, then then great. And hopefully we see him out there again at some point this year. But um, yeah, I, I I think just with that, you know, um, I again hopefully hopefully we're pronouncing this name right. But uh, so Kane Prack, I goes by Soso Prack. Um, their sophomore quarterback has stepped in. Uh, Might have had a tough game against San Rafael, but you know, growing pains. You know, sophomore thrown in there. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Kind of, you know, with a bye week, you know, practicing with, the, you know, with with practice quarterback. We'll see if Piner can kind of retool their offense with him. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think this is a very winnable game uh, 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 against Eureka. Um, obviously, it's playing up in Humboldt at Eureka on a Friday night is, um, is a tough task. You know, that's, that's a tough big, draw, home, yeah. it's a big home field advantage for them. But um, yeah, I think, I think again, you know, we've talked all, all season about, you know, Piner's talent and how much they have. And, and obviously, you know, losing, uh, you know, losing Maddie is huge, but um, they still have a lot of guys who are, who are very good at football up there. So um, I, I think this is a very, you know, winnable game for Piner. And I think they, they do go up there and, and, uh, and take it from Eureka. So Cool. All right. Next game up, uh, our last last Friday night game to get through here. Uh, Seven thirty p.m. start. Uh, Maria Creo at Wood. Um, Wood plays in that uh, Montecito uh, Empire League with Van and Vacville. All those teams, Fairfield. All those teams up there. Monticello. Uh, co- Monticello. Excuse me. Um, three and one. Uh, they have a win over Sacramento, who Rancho beat. Um, uh, last week or two weeks ago, uh, they have one over Dixon and Liberty. Uh, definitely a very winnable game for Maria Korea. We both have the Pumas in this one. Gus, what do you think? Yeah, uh, again, bigger team from from Wood uh, up here. You know, um, some bigger, you know, bigger you know, guys in the line, some good athletes. Um, trying to see, I, I I don't. This is bad preparation, but I don't I don't remember the last time these two teams played. I think it was recently though, but. Um, I think Carrillo is is, is going to come into this one, uh, you know, with a bunch of momentum off of off of last week's win. Um, if that team that showed up last week uh, shows up again this week, I think Carrillo easily wins this one. They've never played before, at least not recently. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, again, I think, I think you know, like I just said, Creo, a lot of momentum. Uh, they're clicking right now. Um, you know, it seems like they're starting. You know, Bluestone is finding is finding a good uh, a good rhythm. Um, and then again, they're you know the running attack with Wyatt Olson and Lucas Sahota looks really good. And also Bo Gleason, who I forgot to mention too, he was a guy that really had a good game. Um, you know, against Petaluma. So yeah, I think Korea is clicking right now. Um, I think Wood will be a very tough test. I don't think this is going to be an easy one by any stretch of the imagination. Um, plus two playing on the road. Um, again, late start, 7.30, uh, playing over there in Solano. So won't be an easy task, but I do think Pedal or, uh, uh, Carrillo, um, you know, is a, is a good team this year, and I think they should win. So Cool. All right, that's it. That runs out our Friday night slate. Let's head over to Saturday where we have three games, a couple of uh, Saturday night games, Gus, actually. Pretty interesting. Yeah. Uh, started out with uh, some... Uh, some main man football, I believe, RUP is off this week. Uh, so, well, we welcome back Elsie Allen to the schedule. Um, they get their league underway this week, but, of course, quite the uh, league opener to have in NCS defending champion Branson. Uh, that is going to be at Elsie Allen. Uh, we both have Branson. I have them big in this one. Uh, no offense to Elsie Allen, but first year in the main man league, Branson. Notorious eight man powerhouse, uh, Branson big in this one, Gus. I, yep, I agree. Um, yeah, I mean, again, Branson has been uh, the premier eight man, eight man team in the NCS for the last couple of years. So, um, this is a, yeah, tall task for LC Allen to, to pull, to, to, uh, yeah, keep this thing close. But, um, yeah, <laughs> just, I was going to yeah. say pull it out, but then I'm like, yeah, keep it within like a five touchdown game, I think. But yeah, it's, yeah, Branson by a lot. Sorry, sorry, Br- sorry, LC. <laughs> Just, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, Cardinal Newman taking on St. Mary's out of Albany on at 1.30 p.m. on Saturday. Um, not St. Mary's of Stockton, who they played last year at home, but St. Mary's out of Albany, which I believe is D5, D6. Um, D5, or they were, they, they were the NCS Division Six runners-up last year. And okay. They're still, in, they're still in Division Six this year. Um, yeah, so pretty... Uh, expected uh, win here for Newman, uh, at least from my perspective. I, I, I don't think they have any trouble with St. Mary's out of Albany. If it were St. Mary's Stockton, we'd be talking a different game. Uh, mm-hmm. But it's St. Mary's out of Albany. Uh, just I think Newman wins uh, pretty pretty big here. I know St. Mary's Stockton is 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 uh, again state powerhouse again this year, like they are. It seems like every year. Uh, but that would be a very fun matchup this year, Newman Newman versus St. Mary's Stockton. Um, but yeah, no, switch the game out uh, for St. Mary's Albany. Uh, like you said too, I think they're going to be a multi touchdown favorite in this one. Um, not saying St. Mary's is not a good St. Mary's Albany is not a is is a is a bad team per se, but just not up to the caliber that um, that Newman is obviously playing at right now. So um, yeah, I think yeah, I, I think Newman by a few scores in this game. All right, Gus, let's round it out with your Greyhounds. Shall we? Tara Linda taking on Healdsburg. Saturday, a 7 p.m. matchup. As marquee as you get, man. I'm telling you that right now. Uh, this is going to be an interesting one. Uh, Tara Linda, we saw what they did, to, at least to open the game against Sonoma Valley. Uh, Sonoma Valley handled Healdsburg pretty well. Uh, I'm going with, uh, we're both going with the Trojans this one. You're not going with the Greyhounds? Are you sure you don't want to make that <laughs> mid-podcast pick? Switch if again. They, if if I mean again, I I think Hillsburg's most probably most winnable game of the year was uh, was last week against Kennedy Fremont or Kennedy Richmond. So, um, you know, I Tara Linda, of course, you know, not obviously not one of the better teams of the MCAL, uh, but again, a couple of good wins, um, including over Washington from San Francisco, and they beat Upper Lake pretty good too. So, um, I think on on paper, this looks like a a, a Tara Linda win. I think by maybe one or two scores at least. Um, but hey, you never know. Hillsborough's been moving the ball pretty well. Uh, Terry Linda's defense has given up 100 points already this year in four games, um, including again, you know, uh, 30 points, 43 points. Um, so yeah, I mean, if 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 Hillsborough's offense, you know, finally, you know, hits it into high gear, you know, they have a good game, like you know, like they did they they did against St. Helena. Maybe it's closer, but yeah, I think Terry Linda is just uh, just ahead above. I think in this one. So yeah. All right, that rounds out our our uh, our football stuff. Uh, one more thing I want to talk about: really, um, uh, a full volleyball preview came out today. Came out this morning. Uh, obviously, this is Tuesday. You'll be maybe watching it uh, tonight or, or tomorrow, whenever you're watching it or listening to it. But uh, full on volleyball preview came out, so make sure you go head on head on and uh, and read that as we. Uh, as we, you know, get more into into other sports coverage that are that are picking up here. Um, 
Gus, anything else on on your end you wanted to uh, touch on before we uh, get out of here? Yeah, so well, some a couple of things. So some really good volleyball games last week around the county. Um, you were at a couple of them. Uh, Newman versus Ukiah. Newman swept the Wildcats. So those are two of the better teams yeah. uh, in the area this year. I think Newman is still riding like an 18 game winning streak. I want to say right 17, now, or even 17. 17. Yeah. Um, so there, Newman is just as as hot as can be right now. Um, and yet somehow Windsor looks like to be uh, to be the team to beat right now. Um, Windsor uh, a couple weeks ago. I believe it was like yeah, a week and a half ago they beat the number seventeen team in uh, in the state in Redwood. They swept them even too. It was, it was Newman. It was Windsor's first uh, first home game of the year, and they swept uh, the top twenty team in the state. So just a testament to how good they are. And then um, last week uh, you were at this game as well. You know, yeah, I, you saw the uh, the Newman Marin Catholic game, and Marin Catholic came in as I think the number twenty two team in the state or something like that. Yeah, the um, number the number four team in the north. North yeah, region and, then, and then Newman was number eight in, or sorry, Windsor yep. was number eight in the in the North region. Um, so a top ten, you know, regional matchup in that one. And uh, and Windsor was also a big uh, a, a big missing piece was a senior outside hitter Taylor Boyce, who was looking like one of the best outside hitters uh, in the area this year. Um, she was out for that game. Um, and yeah, Marin Catholic won in four. But you were saying if if Boyce was there, it it would have been a much closer game. Oh, I, I think so. I think so, hundred um, percent. And, and you know, I, you know, Windsor, it, it could have all gone five. Windsor, Windsor had the was controlling the fourth set, and mm. Marine Catholic just pulled away. So maybe that experience of of boys certainly uh, certainly missed him. Certainly was missed there. But yeah, but uh, yeah, Windsor, Windsor, <laughs> those Windsor Newman games this year are going to be fun, man. I'm I'm, I'm telling you, if if yep. they keep riding this momentum as as they have been. Yeah, circling those uh, those calendars. That's um, uh, October third. Windsor uh, is hosting Newman in their first matchup of the year, and then the MBL schedule makers are at it again. Uh, Newman versus Windsor at Newman, October nineteenth, to close out the uh, regular season. Could be an MBL title on the line over there. Um, so yeah, I mean, again, the schedule makers just uh, just just love putting these two teams against each other, and for good reason. Very very good competitive matches that uh, you know can bring out the best in high school sports. So. Um, and then also Ukiah as well, you know, don't want to, don't want to forget about them or breeze over them too quickly, but, um, you know, they have three losses this year. Two of them are to Newman. One of them is to Marin Catholic. Everyone else, they have just kind of coasted by. So Ukiah. They've is, had a stellar preseason. Mm-hmm. So Ukiah stellar. is, uh, yep. They're, they're opening league play tonight. Again, is uh, Tuesday, September 19th. So opening league, you know, league play tonight. And it's looking like they are a, clear hands-on favorite to win the NBL Redwood this year and yeah maybe have a deep run too um you know in the playoffs just you know based on who they've you know some of the competition that they've beaten so far early on in um in league play um and then also a game that you're going to head out to tonight uh Petaluma is going to be hosting uh, American Canyon volleyball and that's and that's a match with the one and two teams over in the Vival Vival plays began I think you know, two weeks ago so they're they're already in the thick of it so Petaluma is is, is looking like one of the better teams in the Vival as well so it's just some you know, again, you know, it's I know we always talk football on this podcast, but there is some other again, lots of other very, very good, good talent in, uh, in yeah. other sports around here. Um, uh, and then also just a last last thing, too. But um, I, a, a cross country note from uh, from this last weekend. But, uh, you know, the Viking opener was obviously on Saturday that was hosted at, at Spring Lake. Um, you know, again, one of the bigger meets that we have around here. Um, lots of teams were there. Um, yeah, some very good running from uh, Maria Carrillo, freshman uh, Ashlyn Milan. Um, she is a uh, or Ashlyn Malin, sorry. Um, she is uh, she's the daughter of Julia Stamps, Julia Stamps Malin now. Um, uh, yeah, she she ran one of the fastest times for a freshman ever at Spring Lake or ever at the event uh, at the Viking Opener, which has been going on for years. Um, so she is going to be, you know, again, I, I, I think that might've been her debut or her second race in, in, a in high school. And I know that, you know, Korea's coach, Greg Fogg said that they're kind of going to kind of ease her into it, you know, cause they expect to have a pretty long season, uh, going deep in the, in the, in the postseason this year. So they're not going to burn her out obviously right away, but, um, yeah, she had a great debut, but, um, again, she is, uh, you know, she is going to be some really top competition for Montgomery's Hannah Thompson, who, ran the fastest three mile time uh fastest fastest three mile or longer time in area history um breaking julia stamps record that it stood since like 1995 i want to say so like a, or yeah. 99 or 95 or something so um hannah again you know top top distance runner in the area three state titles you know across cross country and uh, track and field and she's obviously off to a uh, again amazing start to her junior year but and and and, and i will no, say no. this race was at woodbridge which is in a, a, a notoriously fast course. It's flat. 
there's usually wind at your back. Um, very friendly running conditions. So many, many records have been set here, uh, literally including in the last two years, uh, the boys, uh, you know, I think it was um, Jonathan Donahoe from, uh, I'm sorry, Jacob Donahoe from uh, uh, from Maria Carrillo set the all-time three-mile boys record there two years ago. And then I turned in Colby from uh, Sonoma Academy uh, broke that record even last year. So Woodbridge always produces you know, really, really fast results. Um, but yeah, Hannah, again, um, you know, she is fast no matter what track she's on. So, um, you know, again, a, another good milestone to add to her uh, to her collection of, um, again, of growing records. So uh, very it will be very fun to kind of see how this cross country season plays out. It will be Hannah and Ashland for sure, you, you know, or it seems like for those top two spots, um, you know, or the top two, you know, girls runners. You, you know, in the area. And then, you know, Maria Carrillo's boys, you know, look really strong. Santa Rosa's boys, you know, look really strong. Carrillo's girls, you know, look pretty good too. So again, this area, you know, for how small or, you know, for our size, I guess we produce so much amazing, you know, running talent. And um, again, Hannah Thompson has already been chronicled at length, you know, for good reason. Yeah. But I think Ashlyn Mallon will also be joining her in that, in that regard pretty soon as well. So absolutely. Few things to watch out, um, non-football related, uh, you know, there. But um, but yeah, I think that about does it for us. That's um, just about an hour, I think maybe a little over for us, uh, you know, in this pod. But yeah, week four um, in the books. Uh, and yeah, coming up on to week five, man, halfway point of the season uh, already just about, um, which is crazy to think. Um, but yeah, it's flying by. Um, yeah, thanks to everyone again who, uh, who watches, listens, and, uh, you know, reads any of our stuff. Uh, really appreciate it. And um, yeah, looking forward to kind of finishing the rest of the season out strong here. Yeah, absolutely. No doubt. Thank you guys again for, for tuning in and, and, and sticking with us uh, for the 20th episode. Um, here's to however many more we have, who, who knows, but uh, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully a lot more than that. Uh, hopefully a lot more than, than just 20, but uh, yeah, appreciate you guys for, for watching, listening, however you consume this content and we'll see you guys next week.